What up, everybody? So back again today with another MCAT question of the day video. I personally think this, this is a great question, so let's get straight into it. It says the uh, genome of HIV, which is a virus, is a single-stranded RNA molecule. Uh, and it is actually a 30, uh, single strand RNA molecule. If the genome is 30% guanine and 30% cytosine, what percent of the genome is adenine? So as you may know, uh, guanine, cytosine, and adenine are nucleic acids found in DNA and RNA. But for the sake of this example, I'm going to replace guanine with a G, cytosine is going to be represented with a C, and adenine with an A. And obviously these are the answer choices. So I'm going to, is 10% of the genome going to be adenine? Is 15% going to be adenine? Is 20% going to be adenine? 25? Or can we not determine that? We're not sure yet. We'll find out. To kind of give you a visual representation of this, I want to go ahead and tell you, assume that the genome that I'm talking about here is 10 base pairs. And obviously the genome, as I mentioned, is a single-stranded RNA molecule. And if it's 10 base pairs, then we know that 30% has to be guanine. So that means three of these base pairs have to be guanine. So I'm just going to randomly make three of them guanine. We also know 30% are cytosine. So we can add in three random Cs somewhere. And again, the placement of these is completely random. I just want to show you what I mean. And so this is what I mean. I'm showing you that this is the hypothetical genome, and this is the hypothetical uh, percentage of guanine and cytosine. And now the question is asking, how many of these unknown spots are A's? And ultimately, like what percent of the overall does it uh, give us? But before we get to this, I want to show you what a lot of students end up doing in this problem. The common approach that happens is a lot of students think back to this thing called Shargoff's rule. And students know from Shargoff's rule, as is mentioned here, that adenine pairs with thymine. Uh, and this isn't entirely correct because it's assuming mostly DNA, but it's adenine pairs with thymine slash uracil, right? If it's RNA, adenine pairs with uracil. But the point is, students know that adenine pairs with thymine slash uracil and that guanine pairs with cytosine, right? This is um, a common knowledge among most students. And therefore, what ends up happening is students assume that the amount of adenine has to equal the amount of thymine slash uracil, if we're talking about mRNA, and that the amount of cytosine has to equal the amount of guanine, right? Uh, and if you don't know a good way to remember this, the way I always remember it is that chips and guac, right? So chips and guacamole always go together just like cytosine and guanine, C and G go together. And that's how I remember these pairings. Because if C and G go together, then A and T have to go together. And, you know, you can kind of get it down. So that's the way I remember it. Uh, and so these are kind of like the two assumptions of Shargoff's rule. But the second assumption of Shargoff's rule is the, I mean, the third assumption, if you take this as the first one and this as the second one, then the third assumption is going to be the fact that if we add up all of these, right, cytosine plus guanine plus adenine plus thymine slash uracil, you get the total number of base pairs. That's what you'd assume. But in this case, we can't apply Shargoff's rule because this rule, this Shargoff's rule only applies to double-stranded DNA and double-stranded RNA, okay? This is, only the, this is the only time when Shargoff's rule will apply. And let, I, let me show you what I mean by that, okay? So let's say we did have double-stranded DNA. Instead of this problem being about RNA, let's say it was about double-stranded DNA. And I told you that 30% of the base pairs were cytosine and 30% were guanine. Well, then you'd know that, you know, if I had guanine here, guanine here, and guanine here, and then cytosine here, cytosine here, and cytosine here, then you know that obviously because guanine pairs with cytosine, then on the opposite end, you have to have cytosine here, guanine here, cytosine here, guanine here, cytosine here, and guanine here, right? Um, and because of that, you have to know that these parts that are left over, these like f four base pairs that I have not drawn in, this is going to account for 40%, um, right? Because look, right now, 60% of our DNA, 60% is C slash G. And that means that if this is double-stranded DNA, that 40% has to be A slash T. So regardless of what happens, 40% of the DNA will be A slash T, and then you can make the assumption that 20% has to be A because A pairs with T, right? And that 20% has to be T. And then you can actually just know that the answer would be 20% A or T because regardless of what I do here, if I put them in, then they end up counteracting. And this is just me hypothetically filling in the answer. But the point is, Chagos rule is under the assumption you're dealing with a double-stranded molecule. 
Okay, it's under that assumption. But what happens when you're not dealing with a double-stranded molecule, like in this question? In this question, we're dealing with a single-stranded RNA molecule, right? We are literally not dealing with anything double-stranded at all. And that means that Chargoff's rule does not apply. Chargoff's rule will only apply for double-stranded DNA, right? Because in double-stranded DNA, we can safely assume that the amount of adenine equals the amount of thymine, and the amount of cytosine equals the amount of guanine. And it also applies to double-stranded RNA, because in double-stranded RNA, the amount of adenine will equal the amount of uracil, and the amount of cytosine will equal the amount of guanine. But it does not apply for single-stranded DNA, and it also does not apply for single-stranded RNA, okay? And let me show you what I mean by that. You might not understand what I mean uh, when I say it does not apply. Um, and the, let me show you that through this example, right? I mean, the question is already written up here, but I want to show you that we know that 30% of the genome is cytosine, and we know 30% of the genome um, is guanine. So 30% is guanine, and 30% is cytosine. And if we know that, let, I can come up with a ton of different ways to draw this out. Um, so look, if I just control this, if I just copy it, let's just say that this is what the cytosine and guanine look like, right? If this, if these are three separate, these are three separate molecules of RNA. I'm just throwing you three separate ones, right? Let's say this is our hypothetical genome. One, this is our hypothetical genome. Two, and this is our hypothetical genome. Three, right? In the middle, we can make no assumptions of what there will be. Just because there's one TA, one adenine here, does not mean that there has to be a thymine here. That's not true at all. In fact, it could even be that you have four adenines here, right? And in this one instance, if we had four adenines there, then we'd have 40% adenine, right? And you'd have 40% adenine, 30% guanine, and 30% cytosine. And you'd have no uracil at all involved in this, right? In another hypothetical situation, maybe we would have no adenines. You can have four uracils in the middle, and in single-stranded RNA2, you have 0% adenine, because this is also equally likely, okay? I'm just giving you multiple different um, situations to show you what it can be, right? And in another one, maybe you could have AU, AU, but the point is there's no obligation for you to have the same amount of uh, adenine as uracil, okay? In this question, believe it or not, the answer is actually E. You cannot determine what percent of the genome is A. Because in this case, I made it tricky. I wrote this question out and I was actually very proud of myself because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then let me draw one more. Ten. Right? I wrote this out because I wrote I wanted to intentionally make it seem like the amount of cytosines and guanines were equal because they're pairing together. But that's not actually the case. I mean, cyto it just happens by chance that the amount of guanine is 30% and the amount of cytosine is 30%. That is pure chance, okay? It's only because they just happen to be there in 30% um, equality. It's not because cytosine is pairing to guanine, and it's not because the guanine is pairing to the cytosine. That's independent. And because there's no base pairing involved here, we cannot make any assumption of the amount of A slash T, okay? Just because there's one A does not mean that there's going to be one T or a uracil. The amount of A need not equal the amount of U because this is single-stranded RNA, all right? And so with that being said, there's no way we can know how much adenine there would be. There could be four adenines here. There might not be four adenines here. There could be four uracils there instead. We don't know because there's no contingent requirement for single-stranded RNA. All right. Even the amount of C does not need to equal the amount of G. But I just made the, I just made them equal because I wanted to make it seem like they were base pairing to each other. But they're not. They're independent. It just happens that they happen to be equal by chance. But they're not. They don't need to be equal um, in single stranded RNA or single stranded DNA for that matter. Okay. So I think the main point of this question is to show you that you know much like 
a lot of the questions I have, you cannot always take those formulas you learn and blindly apply them. You have to know whether or not um, the concept you're dealing with is going to take that formula into consideration properly. And in this case, single-stranded RNA has no stringent requirements and there's no reason why the amount of A has to be equal to the amount of U. Uh, and for that reason, we can never determine the amount of true A that's present in the genome. With that, um, I'm going to end the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, comment below. If you have any uh, questions you want me to help answer, let me know. Uh, but yeah, I hope you're enjoying these series. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. See you in the next video.